How we doing everybody, Carmine here, and we have a new locomotive and passenger cars to do a review on. I say new and I use that term loosely as I've had this thing for actually a while and I honestly completely forgot to do a review on it because truth be told, I'm not a huge diesel guy, but this set does actually hold a special place in my heart. The review I'm gonna be doing is of the two locomotives. It's four car set. I'm gonna discuss the add-on two car and I'm gonna also show you guys the Station Sounds Diner car with all the add-on noises. The item number for this is the 6-31720. This is the Lionel Champion set. Now, if you guys don't know, Lionel did, and they still are technically doing, a bunch of box sets. But I think in the early 2000s was kind of like the pinnacle of their box sets. They came out with a lot of really cool and unique box sets. They had, obviously, the Florida East Coast Champion set. They had the Alton Limited set. They had the super incredibly rare Napa Valley Wine Train set and a bunch of different ones. And I definitely think that this set definitely kind of flies underneath the radar. And it's, I don't want to say it's underappreciated, but I definitely don't see it a lot. So this set premiered in the Lionel Classic Trains Catalog Volume 2 of 2004 it included two e3 aas one powered and one being a dummy and four of the new lionel 18 inch aluminum passenger cars it has tmcc and rail sounds dual motors in the single a unit and it says it has magna traction i have not noticed any type of quote unquote magna traction uh qualities it does not feel like anything sticks to the track not that it's a really huge deal because i never really run it fast enough to justify Magna traction. So now I'm going to go into the locomotive and point out a couple of the finer details, go over some of the features with you guys, and then I will move on to the passenger cars. Alrighty, everybody, up here in the front of the locomotive, we have die cast metal trucks and pilots on the front, die cast metal fuel tanks. So this thing actually has a ton of weight, so it does hold to the track very well. We have lighted number boards on each of the A units, lighted marker lights lighted headlight and a pulsating um, white LED Mars light. Now I will say the Mars light isn't as apparent on this as it is on some locomotives. You can see it pulse, but it is a very simple light pulse, I guess you can say. It's not the end of the world. It's just, it's not as vibrant as what you guys may be used to. You have two engineer and fireman figures on either side of the cab and a lighted cab. Um, the cab light does not actually go off when the locomotive is in motion, but once again, this is a little bit of an older model, so things change throughout the years, as you know. You have opening and closing cab doors, center section doors, as well as rear doors, a bunch of nice separately applied add-on handrails, window inserts, and they're actually flush with the body, which is great, some photo etch see-through screens all the way down to the locomotive, um, a legible builder's plate, and the paint scheme. The paint scheme on this thing is just absolutely slick. Um, I have at the railroad museum I volunteer at, which is the Gold Coast Railroad Museum down in Miami, we have an E9 down there that is painted in the Florida East Coast Champion colors. It was originally a Pennsylvania Railroad unit, then it went to Penn Central, but we have it painted in the Champion scheme and it is a killer, killer scheme. I absolutely love it. The paintwork on this is just flawless. Everything is so crisp and readable. There's no bleed through on nothing or anything like that. So now we're gonna go to the top of the locomotive and give you guys a look uh, with what's going on on the roof. All right, so now we're on the top of the locomotive. We have two die cast separately applied horns up here. We have separately applied metal lift rings. You have your eight exhaust sacks and they are all functional. So you will see streams of smoke coming out of everything. You have some more separately applied add-on detail as well as some other exhaust stacks and vents and stuff like that. Now both of these A units do have smoke generators. Now the way that you get to them is there's a center hatch right here and there's a little I guess you want to say like a knob. When you turn this and pull up this hatch will come off and I'm going to do that to show you guys but I will give you fair warning. These smoke generators on these things they get really hot for some reason. I mean, not to the point where it's gonna melt plastic, but they definitely get much hotter and they're not obviously variable. So like when they're on, they're on. That's it. And they're constantly pumping. So I do suggest if you guys are gonna run this maybe for an extended period of time, just keep an eye on it and keep the thing full because I have actually had a smoke unit burn out in this stuff because it wasn't completely full. And <laughs> because the smoke generators get so warm, 
There's a little flip tab on the inside here that keeps this hatch locked down. It actually got so warm that the glue inside of there actually softened up and it pulled the tab off. So I had to remove the shell to get the tab on. So what I do is I kind of leave it locked and just press it down. It still makes a complete seal and allows all the smoke to go through. And I try and use something small and get a lift ring. And then when you pull up, it comes out just like that. So you put 12 to 15 drops um, for the smoke units right down there. There is the on and off switch on the underside of the frame. And on here, as you can tell, it's got a little tab that fits in to one side. And then this is the little turn and lock lever right here. So as you turn this, that's how it works. But I leave it pretty much closed. The thing sits on there really nice, no issues. I haven't checked Lionel's part supply, so I don't know off the top of my head if they have any more of those in stock, but they should. So it might not be a bad idea if you do end up picking up one of these sets, maybe grab one or two just to be safe. So now we're gonna go look at the end of the A unit and I'll show you some of the details down there. Alrighty, everybody. So here is the rear of the Florida East Coast E3. You have a die cast metal um, fixed coupler in the rear here because both of the A units are supposed to be coupled back to back. So there's no need to have an operating coupler on the rear. However, both locomotives do have electro couplers on the front of them. So you do have that option still, which most of the time you are gonna run this thing um, back to back with the passenger car set, I would imagine. Although most of the publicity photos and stuff that I've seen of these things, they run single A units with their passenger car consist. And what would also hint to that is the way the red blends into the silver to match up with the passenger cars. So you have a lot of nice molded in detail back here, some separately applied handrails. There is kind of like a vestibule walkway, but there is a very large gap between these two A units. So it really doesn't do it any justice. It might make sense if you guys wanna maybe make it a little bit more realistic to hunt down one of the rubber vestibules and attach it to the rear here to kind of take up some of that space. You have cab window, or I should say a window glass in the rear door here, and the door is spring loaded and it opens and closes. So now I'm gonna go on to the diner car, which is the 18 inch aluminum cars, and this will kind of cover the four car set as well, so you guys can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So here we go. Alrighty, everyone, we got the E3 down on the track, so let's go ahead and start this thing up. So the sound set in this thing, I was very impressed with. I really, really liked it. It was a great grumbly uh, engine noise. Um, so now we're gonna try out the horn. Now the horn on this thing is not global because this is not a legacy equipped locomotive. It has what they call multi-blast effect, I guess you wanna say. And this was kind of like the precursor to the legacy global horn. So what it does is as you blow the horn at random, it will make the horn noise at different air pressures so the tones will change. I'm going to try to get it to do it, but it's not a guarantee, so here we go. There you go, I'm sure you guys heard that. So the next sound is the bell, so here we go. Pretty simple, uh, straightforward bell, nothing crazy on that. Uh, the next thing is some of the cab chatter. Now the cab chatter is kind of strange on this. It's like it works when it wants to. I don't know why. You hear a little bit here and there, but nothing's really as fleshed out as the Legacy. But once again, this is an older set, so it is what it is. So this is the locomotive sounds. And then here we go, some of the tower chatter. Alrighty guys, so that's it for that. Now we're gonna move this thing forward and I'm gonna focus on the diner car and I'll go through some of the sounds on there. So here we go. All 
Alrighty, everybody, this is the Lionel 18 inch aluminum station sounds diner car. This was a separate add on for the Lionel Legacy E3 Florida East Coast set. This was available in the catalog the following year, along with a two car add on. So, in total, you are going to have seven cars as opposed to the two A units and the four car pack. I do suggest getting them because. The thing honestly looks kind of stupid with these two massive E units and just these four passenger cars. So starting at the front of the vestibule here, you actually have a rubber diaphragm for the transition between cars. And this actually is kind of sprung, which is really, really, really nice. You have operating uh, metal O-gauge couplers on the front. You have flush fitting windows and they kind of have a nice green tint to them die cast metal um, sprung trucks with a whole bunch of detail, separately applied handrails, um, separately applied uh, name and uh, railroad name plates, more handrails up here, some vents for the kitchen, and then we're gonna glance to the side of the car here and I'll show you some of the interior detail. The interior detail is stunning and it's beautiful on the dining car, dining car and it's even better on all the rest of the cars. So. All right, everybody, here's the front of the car. As you can tell in here, you have a lot of separately applied detail in the way of pipes and airlines and stuff. You do have an opening um, and closing door, and they are spring-loaded, and here's some more of that beautiful vestibule detail. So now we're going to put the locomotive on the track, power it up, and I'll go through some of the sound functions. Of All right, everybody, so I turned the lights on so you can maybe see inside the car a little bit better. These things are freaking killer. Now, I know a lot of people like the newer Lionel cars. Oh, they're more of a scale length, blah, blah, blah. Fight me on it. These were the nicest cars Lionel made, freaking hands down. I know there were some issues with the trucks, with the metal fatigue and things like that. These, I don't believe, have that issue, but I stand by it. These were the most gangster, nicest looking cars they made. I know they're not a scale length but they just look so good. They kept the passenger figures, the interior tables and stuff are all painted different colors. So it's not just a generic cheese board, single color that a lot of the manufacturers are doing. And I can't say enough good things about this car. Alrighty, everybody, here's the Station Sounds Diner car. Now the sound um, fonts are gonna be a little bit different when the car's sitting still as opposed to the car moving. So you're not gonna hear everything. However, I'm going to give you guys a little taste of what it is when the uh, train is uh, stopped at a station. So the way these work is when you hit the button on the legacy remote, it's going to just kind of go through a whole little spiel. So here's the first one. The train is now departing. All aboard. The champion is now departing. All aboard the champion. Alrighty, now the next one is going to be when it stopped at the station, people watching their step, grabbing their luggage, things like that. Yes, sir, you can get your bag right over there. Mind the gap. Ma'am, you have a good day. Watch your step. Alright, the next one should be the station uh, stop announcements. Attention, travelers. And I'm going to manually roll the car, so you might be able to get some of the clickety-clacks in here. With the engine, it's honestly just too loud. So now, obviously, the faster you go, the more repetitive the clickety-clacks get. Um, also, when the train is moving, you are going to hear some in-route announcements, so you'll hear, like, calls for seating in the dining car, lounge car being open and things like that. So now I'm gonna put the locomotive back on the track and finish up the review. Alrighty guys, that wraps up this review of this Lionel set. This thing is an absolute banger. Um, you can come across them on eBay and stuff like that. The prices are kind of really up and down. You can get them with just the basic two engines and the four cars from anywhere from 800 to 1200 bucks, depending on the seller. The two car add-on pops up from time to time, as well as the diner. They are a little bit more rare, but the diner holds it holds its uh, value at around 250 to 300 bucks, as does the two car set. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm now gonna put up some 
uh, clips of the thing running, like I said, at the different clubs and stuff like that, so you guys can have a look at the entire train. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.